we're going to do this a little bit differently this morning. So uh, it's going to be a little singing. It's going to be a hook in this, in this message today. So the hook starts, God gave you a gift. He gave you a call in two. And he entrusted us to know what to do. So you're going to have to try it throughout the, uh, throughout the message today too. So say it, God gave you a gift. And a call in two. And, and he entrusted you. And he entrusted to know what to do. I said God gave us some gifts and a call in two. And he entrusted all of us to know what to do. Amen. 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 So I grew up here in this church. I'm a son of this church, a child of this church. And my mom is still here. Hi, mom. <laughs> I grew up here, yes, I'm a, and this is Youth Sunday, so any of the youth here, yes, I am, we're all youth, right? <laughs> I'm here, I'm a different age, however, we all have similarities. One of our similarities is that God gave us gifts. No matter our age, background, doesn't matter. God has given us gifts, and along with that gift, God has given each of us a calling. God gave you a gift and a call in two, and he expected you to know what to do. See, we got all have gifts, we all have a calling. We may not know what that gift, we may not know what that calling is, right? However, one thing I believe we get twisted, one thing I believe we get wrong, is that God don't just, doesn't just, see, don't, <laughs> right? God don't just give us gifts to work on their own, but he expects us God expects us to do the work to unwrap our gifts. And it is through our calling that we have the greatest amplification that the gifts God has given us. See, but to be a resplendent light and a representation of the magnificence that God is, for the gifts to be unwrapped and, unwrapped and for the calling to be answered, guess what? Say what? We must each do the work. And I think that's where we get it twisted nowadays. All of us, all of us in some sense, whether it's we're playing the lotto and expecting the money to fall out from the sky, right? Whether we're scrolling through social media and saying, well, they must have got it very easily, right? So why don't I have it too? Whether it's, hey, I have challenges and I should just be able to take a pill or medication and it should just all be done. Or if you're, if you're in school, Right? I could just go on chat GPT, get a book, get a, get, get a grade, but that's not how it works. I believe that's not how it works. See, God gave us gifts and a calling, but he expects us to work. God expects us to work to have that calling unfold. So as we saw in today's reading, today's verse, Matthew 4, 18 through, through 22, here, Jesus is calling his first disciples to follow him. So there's a few things I believe we need to highlight. The first is that the two brothers were fishermen, hardworking, everyday people. They were working at their job. Their job was not illustrious, nor I suppose it had a big paycheck, right? Most likely, there were two common men doing laborious jobs, but getting it done. Yet Jesus sought them out for the task. Notice, they weren't the richest, they weren't the most famous, but they were getting the job done. They weren't the richest, they weren't the most famous, but yet Jesus called them. See, this is interesting because I believe we have a tendency that we must first believe we have to first be seen to be sought. We must first have to be the most, have the most likes to be most likable and worthy of being liked. But see, the Son of God said, no, that is not the case. Jesus called them not for what they had, but for who they were. See, it's not a question of your possessions, but it's the contents of our character that calls forth the greatest within us. It's not what we do or what we have. It's who we are being. Who you are is what will make us stand out. Who you are being at home, in school, in the quiet moments by yourself, it matters. And also what you do and how you do it matters. Do we have to be perfect? Do I have to be perfect and good all the time? No. But we have to do our best to be in alignment with the highest ideals God has called us to. I'm sure these men were not perfect. For no one is. I'm not. You're not. 
I'm sure these men doubted their worthiness. I doubt my worthiness. I'm sure you do too. Because at times, I believe everyone does. However, because of God's love, God is not looking for us to be perfect, I believe. He's not looking for us to be perfect, to be called upon for our callings, to be asked to use our gifts to the best of our ability. But God does ask us to be the best where we can. Who you are matters. What you do matters. You don't have to be perfect. But you must look, I believe, we must look to live the ideals to the best of our ability. And God sees through our flaws and foibles and looks at our possibility and potential. Because God gave us some gifts. God gave you some gifts. And a call in too. And he expected all of us to know what to do. Another thing to note is that Jesus said, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus didn't say, come follow me, and now you are fishers of men. Jesus didn't say, come follow me, and you are made fishers of men. No, Jesus said, come follow me, and I will make you. I will make you fishers of men. See, I believe too often we feel that when God, is, when, when given a calling, uh, too often we feel that when God gives us a calling, it's just supposed to work. But no, when we have a calling, we must do the work. He didn't say, you'll now be made because I called you. He didn't say, now you are because I called you. He said, I will make you, right? God gives us gifts, but in order for those gifts to work, we must do the work. Just like the disciples were called to be like Jesus, to do the things he does, to be the way he is, then you will be made fishers of men. Too often, I feel we feel entitled, right? Because of a physician or because of who we are, or because of what we have, or because of who our parents were, because of our money in our bank account. Sometimes I feel we get comfortable with what we have done. But I believe we are actively called to be doing. And in the doing, our gifts will unfold. In the doing, we will, forget, we will fulfill our calling. We cannot rest who we are and what we have done. We must continually use our gifts to be like Michelle Obama said, becoming. Those men had the potential, but to fulfill the possibility that God gave them, they had to constantly learn, constantly grow, constantly create. So what? God gave us gifts and a call in too. And he expected all of us to know what to do. See, I believe we have gifts, we have a calling, and we must put our gifts and callings to work to fulfill what God has called us to do. But how should we expect to work? And what should we expect to do? See, I know, I believe all of us know the, the, the uh, parable of the talents, right? And what was that? Well, first, what is a parable? What is a parable? It's a story, right? It's a story. It's a message. And what does a parable do? It teaches a lesson. And what I, what I realize, it says, who has ears, let them hear. And who has eyes, let them see. I believe through parables, Jesus is asking us also to work. He's not saying, here is the lesson. He's saying, discover what the lesson is through the discernment of what you've learned before. Even in how, how Jesus was giving his wisdom, he was asking us, I believe, asking us and calling us to work. And if we remember the parable of the talents, right? So, so what was the parable? There were, there were three, three servants of a man, and they were each given talents. They were each entrusted with talents. One man, he was trusted with how many talents? We've been doing this together. How many talents? <laughs> right? Another man was entrusted with how many? Another man was entrusted with how many? Right? And then in the story, in the, in the parable, what we, what we see is that the man said, okay, I've given you these talents. I'm going to go away, and then you come back. When I come back, you know, we'll, we'll settle accounts. And then what happened in the parable? What did the man with five do? He increased. He went out, did the work, came back with five more. What did the man with two do? We're doing it together. He went out. He went back, came back, and he increased because he did the work. 
right? And what, the man, what happened to the man with the one? What did he do? Right? So he held on to it. He buried it. And then what happened? When, 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 when the master came back, when the man came back, he said, you know, let's start off with the one, because you know what happened to the five. The five and the two, they took it and they worked and they multiplied. But what did the one do? He said, you know, I know how you are, master. I know how you are. You know, you're a hard man, right? And I see how you work. You, you, you sow and, 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 and you get back and you multiply. I know how you are, so here's what I did. I, I didn't do anything with it. What I did, though, I took it and I buried it underground so when you came back, I could give you back your one. Isn't that amazing? But what did the man say? He said, you were lazy and you were wicked. He said, I'm going to take that one for you, from you and give it to one with the ten. Because he said the one with the ten did what he did and he made it multiply, right? He said he used what he had and multiplied his gifts. And when you have abundance, having abundance means taking what you have, multiplying it. Because you've been a good steward with what you have, you will get more. But that person, that man, even what he had was taken away from him. And I thought it was harsh, right? I thought it was very, very harsh as I was listening to it. But I want to I I say a few things that, I, that I, I noted from it. So to note in this parable, the man who gave the talents to the servants, a few things. Number one, he didn't give very many instructions, right? But I believe he instructed through saying very little. First, he entrusted the servants with talents, each at a different level, right? He didn't give all of them five, right? He didn't give all of them two. He didn't give all of them one. He gave them to the best of their abilities. See, God, I believe, will not give us more than we're capable of handling. I believe God loves us, and we are not here to be broken, beat down, or punished. No, God wants us to grow, but we must work. We must do the work with what we've been given. I believe God is a loving God. I believe God does not want us to fail. Instead, he wants us to stretch. He wants us to grow. With that said, Jesus explained that each talent, each man was given according to their ability. Not everyone got five, two, or one, but each one was entrusted what they could handle according to their abilities. I believe similarly, God has given us tools, talents, and treasures and gifts according to our abilities. We don't have to look at what others have. We don't have to look at what is it others' bank accounts or their cars in their driveway or their houses or the clothes on their back or if you're a student, the, the shoes on their feet, the school, what they have in their locker, what they have on their lunch plate. If you're in college, what grade that other person is getting. No, we don't have to look at other people. We simply have to look at what we are doing. What do I have? What do we have individually? We simply need to focus on the gifts that we've been given because God has already allocated to us what we need for our journeys. Because what? God gave us some gifts and a call in two. And he expects us, come on, we rocking over here, <laughs> to know what to do. <laughs> Secondly, the men were given but not told what to do. The men didn't have a specific plan or written instructions, but they were simply entrusted. I believe God does not give us plans for our gifts. He simply entrusts us. Because God trusts us enough to go forth and do something with what we've been given. There's not an exact plan for our gifts or your gift or your calling. Sometimes we can get stuck in that analysis paralysis, right? But instead of getting stuck, so you gotta, we have to see the ones who are successful. What did they do? They were successful in multiplying and, be, and became creative, not according to a plan, but according to working, trying, and exploring, and seeing what they could create. See, I believe God has faith in us, and we must have faith in God and confidence and faith in ourselves. See, don't worry about AI. Don't worry about artificial intelligence. That's what I believe. Be like the multipliers. Go out and create. Go create what, with, with what God gave you. Don't worry about AI. AI cannot replace us. AI cannot replace you. AI cannot do what God has already allocated to you. Do not worry. Do not fear. Just do with what God has given you. Because what? God gave us some gifts. And a call in too. 
and he expected us to know what to do <laughs> exactly. And we, we're going a little bit more because I'm enjoying being here. This is, this is home. This is the church I grew up in. This is the church I grew up in. So thirdly, the final man who was similarly given a talent according to his ability came back with excuses and tried to, uh, tried to convince the man. He tried to convince him with logic and reasoning and words why he did not have. And what happened to him? Not only was he stripped of what he was given, but he was cast out. See, when I first read that, I thought that was kind of harsh, right? It's like, I, I, at least I tried. I explained to you what, what happened, right? But when I read it closer, I saw that, I, and I believe that he was not cast out simply because he did not try, which I think was part of it. But I think he was cast out more importantly because he tried to be clever. And in trying to be clever, he thought he could get over and simply not do. See, sometimes I believe we try to outsmart others, but most importantly, sometimes I believe we do most ingeniously outsmarting ourselves. But what did the man say? The man said, well, if you knew how I was, right, at least put the money in the bank, because there we could have multiplied, at least do something. See, I believe God did not put us here to trick us, but we are tested. And even in the test, if we are not sure what to do or how to do it, God just asks us to do something. You may not know what to do, but just do something. It may not be the perfect thing. It may not be the exact thing. But to do the work, he just asked us to do something. And I believe in God's grace. God was not saying bring back many, but simply be creative and do something with what you have. And in the doing, you will figure it out. Our fears are not excuses. Having money is not an excuse. Your age is not an excuse. You can start where you are. There's a basket out in the hallway. You can bring something from mother in Ghana. You can go down to the food pantry. You can cook something in your kitchen that will help feed somebody else. It doesn't matter what we have, but we can start where we are. So the next time you feel stuck, just start. And know that God's grace God's grace and God's love will cover the gap between where you are and where you desire to be because God gave you some gifts and a call in too. And he expected all of us to work hard too. So finally, some of you may know my journey, but I'll give it very briefly. Um, as mentioned, first African-American male valedictorian in Unida High School's history, went on to Harvard University at 17. Um, it was a great experience, but at boom, like so many of our young people nowadays, I had uh, my first experience with mental illness. I had a panic attack. Uh, a year later, I had my second experience. I had a manic episode. And a full year later, at the end of my sophomore year, I had another manic episode. I was hospitalized for two weeks. I came out of the hospital. I began taking meds. And really, I believe my journey on the healing and doing this calling really began, right? Um, and it's been an ongoing journey, and, and it continues forth, and that's what it is. It's just an ongoing journey to uncover the gifts and the calling that God has given me through what I've been through, right? Um, and, 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 and back in college, in high school, I was diesel. Right? I heard a couple of comments, what are you wasting away over here, right? I was 200 pounds solid, right? I was 200 pounds solid. I was a cheerleader in high school and in college, right? But like then, back then, I still look good now, right? But I said, you know what? Hey, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I said, I traded some muscles for some wisdom. It's OK. It's OK, you feel me, right? Back in college, I was a cheerleader. But how did I become a cheerleader? I'm glad you asked. I'm not going to go into the exciting story about me being a cheerleader, but it was something that I had fun with. I had no intentions to become a cheerleader. Hakeem from Hempstead had no intentions of becoming a cheerleader, right? But I tried it out, and it stuck. All of my friends who were football players, they laughed. They were like, yo, you need to be out on this field with us, man. Look how big you are, right? But see, in life, I believe just because someone thinks they know how you should use your gifts because of how you look, because of your weight, because of your height, because of your skin color, because of your bank account, whatever it is, that doesn't mean how you intended to use your gifts. God gave you is how you believe, how others believe you should use them. Use the gifts according to how you believe. God gave you best to use them. As mentioned, I was diagnosed with mental illness. And it was a hard time, yes. 
Yet I believe your deepest pain can position you for your highest purpose. I went from Hempstead to Harvard to hospitals, but also to the halls of Congress and to embassies in Jamaica to be the first mental health ambassador for the United States. I've spoken in stages and penitentiaries and on TV. See, back then I used to, used to have cheerleaders and I used to lift them up, but now I use my voice, my calling, and position to lift other people up. I help lift through my triumph over my tribulations. My trials became what I talked about to teach. See, your gifts may be what you're good at, but your calling may come from what you came through. I believe, <clears throat> I believe to find your calling, you must look at where you had heartbreak, heartache, and hard times. And that, where, that, where, that may be where you can use your gifts as strengths to sustain you. See, when I first started speaking, many people were like, what? You were crazy. It's dangerous to talk about mental health, mental illness, and what you've been through back in 2012 when I started. It's silly, and, and, and it will hurt you in the long run. You just need to get a job. But I strongly felt the calling. And I said, as I said before, just like when I was cheerleading, leaping into the crowds and lifting the cheerleaders, now I use my gifts through my calling to uplift hundreds of thousands. I wasn't sure of how it would work. I wasn't sure how I would do it. I didn't know what others would think. But that calling was so loud, it was so strong, that it drowned out the voices from others, so much to the point where I didn't hear them anymore. And I just heard a calling. So as you move forward, young people out there, all of us, we still have the youth in us, right? As you move forward in school, in college, as we move forward in life, in our careers, in life no matter how old we are, how old young we are, right? We have to get guidance. We have to talk to our mentors. We have to talk to our healers and our teachers and our your pastors and whomever your, your confidants are, right? Talk to them. But most importantly, have confidence in yourself and faith in the gifts that God gave you. Faith in the path and faith in the calling. Because God knew that you would figure out what to do. So God gave you gifts and a calling too. And God entrusted us to know what to do. God gave us a gift and a calling too. And he expects us to do the work that we got to do. God gave me a gift and a calling too. And I know I am doing what he called me to do. Thank you so much. God bless. And I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.